We're gonna begin seated with some breath work. So if you want to just sit comfortably, um, I'm gonna sit in a virasana just because a lot of times I like to, to get a little bit of uh, virasana energy for the, the legs. Um, but for virasana, we're sitting between the heels. I put a block between my feet and sit back on it. If you have any knee um, tenderness, then you don't wanna do that. You just wanna sit comfortably. So find a comfortable seat, whatever that means. And you can even sit in a chair or on the couch or on the bed. So we're up on our six bones with a nice long spine. And just give yourself a moment to arrive. So wiggle around, feel your seat, give your head a little shake, your shoulders a little shimmy. And let your sit bones drop into the earth. So with the sun and the moon waning in air, it's very mental. It's a very mental energy. And so while we are going to harness that waning air energy, we do want to ground, we want to arrive. So feeling your sits bones, feeling your feet, sitting up nice and tall. And then let's take a deep breath in through the nose. Hold the breath at the top. And then exhale out the mouth. And then again, take a deep breath in. Hold. And then exhale. And one more time, inhale. Hold and out the mouth. Good. And now this time, inhale, reach your arms up, big stretch. Exhale, sweep the arms out like big wings. Pull them around. Good. Inhale, reach up, big stretch. Exhale, circle out and around. One more like that. Inhale, reach up, big stretch. Exhale, circle out, draw in, inhale, hands to heart, exhale, hand to heart, hand to belly. Arrive in the body, just noticing the quality of the mind, the breath, the body. And we'll invoke the waning wisdom of the air moon, chanting Om Chandraya Namaha to begin to lengthen the breath. You can join me or just listen. Take an inhale. Om Chandraya Namaha. Inhale. As you exhale, release your left hand, touching your index finger and thumb for Dhyana Mudra, the mudra of knowledge. Take your right hand up towards your face. If you are familiar with any mudras for Nadi Shodha, you can take that. But otherwise, we're just going to keep it simple, folding the middle three fingers and then taking your thumb and your pinky finger up towards your nose. So your thumb will close off your right nostril. Your pinky will close off the left. And we're actually going to do Chandra Vedana, not our, um, the, the alternate. So basically, you're going to close off your right nostril. And we're going to start by just breathing in and out of the left. Just breathing in and out of the left. Now, if you're stuffy, and sometimes you don't even know it until you're breathing in one nostril, you can actually just release the right and just imagine that you're inhaling and exhaling the left. So as you inhale, the breath goes up into the third eye and back down. And if you're able to comfortably breathe through the left nostril, I want you to start to count your breath. So count the inhale and count the exhale. And I want you to see if you can let the exhale get a little bit longer. So if you're inhaling four, can you exhale five? Or inhaling three, exhale four. And if you're able to get the exhale even a couple beats longer, then great. So this is moon breath, Chandra Vedana, helping us to move out of the more active solar day to this practice. And 
air energies tends to be um, yang, tends to be more of a yang energy. So helping us to try to be receptive to the waning wisdom of the air. Finish one more round. Good. And then pause. And then inhale through the left nostril, hold. Hold the, the left nostril, and then you're going to exhale out the right. So moving in a traditional alternate nostril. You'll exhale out the right, and then you'll inhale right, close off both nostrils, exhale left. Inhale left, close off both, exhale right. So you're exhaling and inhaling one nostril and then switching. If this is comfortable, come back to the count. So making the exhale a little bit longer. And so if you find the right nostril is clogged, again, same thing, you can release the hands and just imagine. And it's pretty, it's pretty effective to just imagine you're breathing up and down the nostrils. Soften your eyes, stay with the breath. Oh, my dishwasher would be done by now, but it's not. I'm just going to turn that off. The next time you exhale out the left nostril, go ahead and release. And we're going to touch both index finger and thumb. So on your right and left hand. So in Gyana Mudra. And just pause for a moment. And as you pause here, I want you to be aware of the breath at the nostrils. So not really worrying about right and left, but just noticing as you watch your breath at your nostrils, which nostril is dominant. Just noticing the breath at the nostrils. And then bring your attention to the right hemisphere of the brain. And if you've never tuned into the right hemisphere of the brain, you're missing out. And even just ask the hemisphere of the brain to reveal itself. And then feel the left hemisphere, asking left hemisphere to reveal. And then just bringing that awareness to the hemispheres of the brain. Noticing if one stands out more, if there's sensation, And then shifting into the midbrain, so directly behind the third eye point at the height of the ears, the pineal pituitary gland. Imagine a little pearl with a twin set of cherries sharing a stem above it. And again, if you've never sensed your pineal pituitary glands, ask them to join us. And just sense. And then slide down your throat to your heart. You feel the heart. And then be aware of your right lung and your left lung. And again, just see if you can sense the lungs. Notice the right, ask the right lung to show itself, the left. And then slide back to the back of the ribs, down to bottom rib to the kidneys. So the kidneys are like two little fists or ears that rest right in the bottom rib. And again, see if you can feel the right kidney and the left. And just sensing the kidneys. And then move your attention to your right hand and just feel the right hand. 
and then the left hand and just the left hand. And then feel both hands, all your attention in both hands, noticing the difference between sensation and awareness. And then take a big, big breath in, hold, and sigh it out the mouth. <sighs> Release your hands, shake it out, and make your way to all fours. So let's just start to transition from breathing and sensing into breathing and moving. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips. You can start with cat cow or circles, but just notice how you feel. So when we're working with double air elements, um, and especially with mercury retrograde, doing breath and sensing practices, really sitting in silence as you breathe and as you sense. And those parts that we worked with are very much the Gemini Libra point. So the nostrils, the brain, the pineal and pituitary gland, the lungs, the kidneys, and the hands. And of course, you can do that with any gland, any organ, any part of the body, but in terms of creating clarity and space, And just again, follow your breath a little bit longer here. Soften your eyes. You want to add in some down dog or any other movement, or you can even just come into child's pose. Just stay with your breath. Feel the placements of your hands. Again, the sensing of the breath moving through. So the waning moon is more of an introspective time anyway. It's where we start to shed the skin of the month. We start to create space. And deep listening is a great practice. So that listening and sensing are really going to be good practices the next three weeks because Libra is all about relationships. And with the, the powers of communication a little bit garbled, really being sensitive and spacious, listening, allowing, Couple more breaths. So we're getting that little gift of the double air sign to start this Mercury retrograde cycle to really be aware of our mind. And then bring yourself to a neutral spine and shift into puppy dog. Stick your hips up, walk your hands out, forehead down or chest down, draw the belly in. So breathing into hands and kidneys. So Gemini is the hands, the voice box. Libra is the kidneys. And then roll it back up to all fours. Ground through your hands and then extend your right leg up and stretch your left arm up, hold, and breathe. And just watch your breath. Notice what happens as we hold. Another inhale. Exhale, release, switching sides. Left leg slowly comes up, right arm up. Holding here. Long spine. Notice the difference on either side. Good. Take another breath. Exhale, release. Push back down. We're facing dog if that's part of your practice. Otherwise, you can push into child's pose. Lift your hips, relax your head. So press through your hands, really lift your hips. 
breathing into the back body. And then if you're in child pose, you can roll forward. From down dog, you can shift towards plank, lower your knees. Let's all come down into sphinx on the belly. So spread your fingers, press down through the tops of the feet, lift your chest. Shake out your head, soften your jaw. So a lot of these shapes, you can have that awareness of the nostrils, the brain, including the pineal pituitary glands, the lungs and kidneys, and hands. The waning cycle is very much about slowing down, turning in, especially mercury retrograde. It's so easy to, uh, we normally, the reason mercury retrograde people have a lot of feelings about is because we are a very mercurial culture. Everything is fast. Everything is technology. Everything, you know, is 24 seven. And so when it goes backwards, it sort of forces us to slow down to look a little bit deeper at the inner workings of the mind, of our communication, of our collaboration. And that's frustrating because it brings up all the things that we're usually too busy to sense. And where Libra is concerned, it's all about relationship. And yoga tells us that everything is relationship. Take another breath. As you exhale again, bring your hands under your shoulders, push up and back, down dog or child's pose. And then make your way up to ragdoll towards the top of the mat, feet facing forward, about hip width distance apart, knees soft. And shake out your head. So imagine dumping out the contents of your mind. If you have blocks nearby, you can always stack them up so you can place the forehead or the hairline down. And just breathe here. You can always separate the feet a little wider, bend the knees a little deeper. And then roll yourself up to stand. Shrug the shoulders both ways. Inhale the shoulders up to the ears. Exhale, release them down. <laughs> Drop the right ear to the right shoulder. And then the left ear to the left shoulder. And then the chin to the chest. And then just roll out the neck gently right to left. Little half moon. Oh, I got, I like never run the dishwasher when I'm home or like I do it at night and I kept thinking it was done. <laughs> Mercury retrograde stuff. This is what I'm talking about the next few weeks. Be aware of your devices, your appliances, your cars. Oh. Good. Bring it back to center. Bring your feet together. Inhale, reach the arms up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, right leg steps back, lower it down towards the mat. Pause for a moment. So again, get grounded. Right hand stays down, left arm reaches up, or hand thigh, drag and fly twist, opening up the heart. Exhale, release, look forward, step the right foot up. Feet together. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, fold, left leg steps back, knee down, toes tucked or untucked. Draw the legs in, left hand stays down, right arm up. Opening through the heart, tip the arm is extended, reach through your fingers. And then release down, look up, step up, feet together. 
Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach the arms all the way up. Right arm down the right leg, left arm overhead. Fold. Breathe. You can look down towards the earth like the waning moon hiding her face. Inhale, up. Exhale, left arm. Breathe. Inhale, bring it up. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale again, right leg back, knee down. Squeeze the legs here and then climb up to the thigh or reach up Anjana Asana. And feel into the fingers, into the back body, lift your heart. Exhale, hands down, look up, step up. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold, left leg steps back, squeeze the legs. Climb up to the right thigh, lift your chest here or sweep your fingers up. Relax your shoulders as you lift, soften your jaw. Take another breath. Exhale, release it down, look up, step up. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, reach up. Left arm down, half moon, big stretch. And then bring it up. And to the right, squeeze the legs, press your hips. Inhale, up. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, right leg back. Squeeze the legs, right hand down, left arm up, hand to thigh, or stretch out. Exhale, bring it back. Inhale, stretch up to that Anjaneyasana. Take your left hand to your right wrist, pull up and over to the left. So squeeze the legs as you reach up and over. Soft elbows. And into a little bit of a balance here as we side bend. Inhale, bring it back up. Exhale, hands down, look up, step up. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Left leg back, knee down. Squeeze the legs, right hand to right thigh, or reach your arm up towards the waning sky. Lifting your chest, opening. Exhale, release. Inhale, bring it up to Anjane Asana. And then right hand to left wrist, pull up and over. Hips forward, shoulders back. Getting a little psoas, hip flexor action, a little balancing here. Inhale, back up. Exhale, take it down, step up. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, fold, soft knee, step back, downward dog, or to all fours. If you're in all fours, you can take a cat, cow, or child's pose. If you're in down dog, you can wiggle, stretch. Come back to tabletop. Hands under shoulders, knees under hips, lift the right leg up. Lift the left arm and hold. Option here to point the back toes and then left hand comes for the right foot. Square the chest, gaze forward. Notice what happens, notice the quality of the mind, inhale. Exhale, release everything out. Push back child's pose or downward dog. Take a breath, reset. And then back to all fours. Left leg up, right arm. Ground here. Maybe bend the back leg, reach back. One more breath and release. Push back down, dog or child's pose. 
From child's pose, roll out onto the belly. From down dog, you can roll towards plank and then lower back into sphinx. Also option to take cobra. Tops of the feet down, lift your chest, breathe into the kidneys, into the heart, the lungs. And draw the ears back, the awareness of the brain, the master glands, the breath swirling through the nostrils. And if you're in Cobra, come to Sphinx. Point the right toes, draw the right foot in. Let your right arm draw in just a little bit. Sweep your left arm back, hold the top of the right foot, and then square the chest. Or you can also keep the left hand down and use the same side. So just whatever is easier for your shoulders. Lifting your heart, staying connected, lungs, kidneys, master glands, inhale. Exhale, release. And then other side, point the left toes and you can either use the right hand or the left, but try to square the chest a bit, open the heart, breathe into the quads and into the heart. So again, that air energy is all lungs and up, right? But we wanna keep a little bit of groundedness. And release. Push yourself up and back, down dog, child's pose. You're just find a movement that resonates. Stretching back. Bring yourself up to all four, or not, up to standing forward folds. Dump out the brain again, maybe stack up the blocks, place the forehead down. Bend your knees, shake it out. And then roll it on up. Inhale, reach up. Exhale, fold down. Step the right leg back. Keep the note, the knee lifted. Squeeze in. Right hand stays down. Left arm up. Rotate. And then release. Walk it up. Crescent pose. Now, of course, you can always lower the back knee if the body um, would appreciate that. But you can reach up. And then again, left hand to right wrist, pull up and over. Squeeze the legs, balance. And inhale, lift back up through your crescent. Open your heart. Exhale, release the hands down, step the right foot up. Inhale, up halfway. Exhale, fold left leg back so you can just keep the knee lifted or, of course, feel free to lower down. Hug the legs in, right arm reaches up or the right hand stays at the thigh. Squeeze the legs as you lean back. Release the right hand, hug in, and then bring it on up for crescent. Right hand to left wrist, pull up and over. Try to keep squaring your hips. Soften your jaw. And it doesn't have to be a big side bend either. All right, inhale, reach up. Lift up, open heart, open lungs, balance. And then release it down, step up, fold. Inhale up halfway. Exhale fold. Inhale, bring it up. Hands to heart. So standing firmly, and you can always go to the wall. We're going to do a little more balance. Ground through the left leg. We're going to draw that right foot behind, taking the right hand to the top of the foot or to the ankle, and then square your hips. And you might just stay here getting the quad stretch. 
And take your left hand to your heart or the wall if you need it. Lift your chest, stay just like this, or start to kick the foot and lead the heart forward. So really opening through the heart, opening through the lungs. If you want, you can stretch the left arm up, otherwise just stay with the heart connection. Kicking back as you breathe. Soft gates. And then come up and release. Give it a little shake, shake out your wrists, shake out your hands. And then side two, so bend the left leg back. And you can just simply again stay here with the quad stretch. We're gonna naturally feel a heart opener. Or take your right hand to your heart. So keep that connection and start to kick back. Opening your chest, softening your jaw. The right arm might reach out. You might be holding on to something. Leading with your heart. Soften the jaw. And then bring it up. Shake it out. Good. Feet together. Top of the mat. Inhale, reach it up. Exhale, forward. Inhale, halfway. Exhale again, step back, downward dog or tabletop. And you can push to child's pose or take a couple breaths. And then you can come to all fours or you can do this from child's pose. We're gonna take thread the needle. So um, child's pose is to be a little bit more gentle, but if you want a little more, stay on all fours. The right hand comes forward, hips draw back, left arm reaches up, and then weave left arm under. Left ear comes down, opening the chest, sliding the hips back. Breathe deeply here. And then bring it up and switch sides. So right arm comes up and then thread it under child's pose or tabletop. Take another breath and then unwind, lift it up. And then again, one more time, push back down dog or child's pose. Roll out onto the belly into Sphinx. Lifting your chest. Now you're gonna have the option to stay in Sphinx the whole time. Otherwise, bring the elbows under the shoulders and gently clasp your hands. So clasp your hands so you can really press your palms down. And then tuck your toes, lift your hips and push back into dolphin. So dolphin is like down dog on the forearms. Feet together, knees bent. Lifting your hips, we really want to lift the hips as we press the heart back. So we want the head lifted off the mat. If this is too much, come back to Sphinx. Otherwise, pressing the hands together, lifting the hips, drawing the belly in. Take one more breath. So really highlighting the kidneys, the heart. Inhale. Exhale, release back into Sphinx. Shake it out. And then push yourself back, everybody back, child's pose. Mm -hmm. 
Good. And then come to all fours and just take a few cat cows. Just release. Notice your breath. Pause in cat, really arching back. And as you keep that nice arch, draw your right knee up directly between your hands and then open the shin to the left. Walk your hands forward and pull the left knee in directly behind the right and open the shin to the right. And then shift back to sit between your heels for cow faced pose. So if that doesn't make any sense, <laughs> we're sitting on our bottom with the knees stacked and we're sitting between the feet. If this is not available, which it's definitely might not be, you're gonna do this on your back, okay? So you'll lay on your back and you'll stack your knees and you'll just take your hands behind your left thigh because the right leg is on top, okay? And if that doesn't make sense or if it doesn't feel right, then just take sleeping in the kitchen. If you are up in cow face, you can just stay with the hips. Otherwise, we're gonna add the heart opener. So the right arm comes up, bend the arm, take your left hand to your right elbow and breathe here. Or the left arm comes back and you reach for your hair, your shirt, your fingers. If you happen to have a yoga strap or a t-shirt nearby, you can always hold on to that. And you can stay upright or you can start to bring your heart towards the knees. So if you are in the full variation with the shoulders, really try to relax the shoulders, lengthen through the fingers. And then wherever you are, I want you to bring your awareness to your breath. Start to lengthen the exhale. So whether that means you're counting the breath or just sensing it, lengthen the exhale. If you're in the shoulder variation, release. And just take a couple more breaths into the hips. You can roll the shoulders out, you got your head. Take a big, big inhale and exhale, stick out the tongue. Lean yourself back and then just bend the right leg so the foot is planted, the right knee faces up. Right hand behind the left arm wraps or hooks into a twist. If you're on your back, you can drop your knees over to the left. Or just take whatever reclining twist works. So again, think about really lifting up so you can sense the brain, the master glands, the lungs and heart, the kidneys. Wiggle your fingers, feel the breath at the nostrils. Give your head a little shake. And then slowly unwind. So if you're up for cow face, bring your hands back, shift back and swing the legs around to switch. So sometimes that momentum is a little bit easier. Uh, not always. So left leg's on top, whether you're seated or on your back. If you opt for the shoulder opener, left arm up. Or make sure you're doing your sides. I'm aware with Mercury retrograde, especially since I have a lot of Gemini and Libra that I might've been saying the wrong sides the entire class. And so hopefully you've been honoring your body. <laughs> It's always a question during, during some of these Mercury retrogrades, especially the teaching on, on Zoom, where I have no one to kind of let me know if I'm mixing it up until I like listen to the replay later and then it's like too late. So a lot of grace. Libra is the ruler of grace and harmony and beauty and balance. And Libra really likes everyone to be pleased. And during Mercury retrograde, you cannot please. I mean, you can't please everyone anytime anyway, but especially not during Mercury retrograde. Like, 
a lot of the, the Libra energy is very much about, you know, speaking in a calm, peaceful way, being very articulate. And then when Mercury is retrograding Libra, it's like nothing comes out right. So a lot of deep listening. And I was, um, one of my teachers was talking about how before you have conversations, especially if they're challenging conversation with people we have contracts with. So whether that's romantic or a partner or work, like really checking your intention. You're like, why am I having this conversation? Is it for healing? Is it for clarity? Is it for joy? And like actually saying that like to yourself, like I am setting the intention to have this conversation to deepen healing. And like, if you can't come up with like a, a, a positive, you know, um, intention, then maybe it's not the time to have it. And that doesn't mean that we don't have it, but during this time, right? So like really holding that intention that what we're doing is going to add to the harmony and not the chaos. Go ahead and release the hands if your hands were up. And one of my Native American teachers always used to say, like, whenever we would do ceremony or practice, like, thank you for not adding to the confusion, right? Like, thank you for not adding to the chaos. Those of us who are doing this work, it doesn't mean that we're perfect or that we're doing things perfectly by any means, but we're trying to bring clarity. We're trying to bring peace. We're trying to bring healing. And especially during this cycle, especially these next few weeks, like really honoring that, like, is what I'm about to say going to add to the confusion? And that, again, take care of yourself, right? So having that time for self-care and really honoring your relationship with yourself, your breath, your awareness, your sensing, and then, right, having that intention. Take a big breath in. Exhale it out. Go ahead and shift the body to point the left knee up left hand behind and twist or dropping the knees to one side for a twist. And again, think of that length. Tomorrow the moon moves into a water sign. So emotions can start to come in. And so when we're already having like mental confusion and then the emotions come in, it can get a little bit intense. And then later this week, we have a fire sign. So that brings in some drama. So to me, having this practice this week to really get that wisdom of the air element, that unity of the air to kind of get ourselves in line with our breath and our awareness so that way we can really go with the emotions and the fire that might come up this week right so take that space for your practice take that space for your self-care inhale and then exhale release extend it out the soles of the feet together you can rock the spine or circle or just stretch it out and so stay here in Baddha Konasana for a couple breaths. I just want to talk about the next few minutes of practice. So um, I was going to offer a yin pose for relaxation, but you don't have to do that. You can totally take whatever other shape you want. Um, but if you wanted to take supported fish, that might be a really nice way to open up all these areas. So again, you can stay in bound angle and maybe just glance up, but you would, Jen, you would need your blocks or a bolster or a couple blankets. So you can also, like I said, you can just do Shavasana, you can put your legs up the wall, you can sit in meditation or we'll take the blocks or whatever things you're using. And one will go underneath the shoulder blades and the other will go under the head. So your butt is down and then the mid back, the shoulder, just below the shoulder blades, excuse me, the bra strap line is sometimes referenced if that is applicable. And then another one under the head. So you can even have a bolster underneath your mid back and then a blanket under your head. You can open your arms and let the knees knock together. You can also extend the legs and maybe put a blanket or a pillow under your knees. If you want to do bound angle, you can continue that. You can even um, put something under your feet so your legs are lifted and get a little bit of a mild inversion. That can be nice too if you have like a bolster, you can stack it under your feet. But like I said, this is really targeting the kidneys, the lungs, the head but that might be too much. You might have already had enough of that today. 
So if this isn't appropriate, then just lie over blankets or bolsters or take your legs up. So taking the legs of the wall or a chair might be really nice too. You know, and if you've got time tonight, maybe do you know one of these now and another later. So the waning cycle, we definitely want to bring in more yin practices, more rest. Especially here in the northern hemisphere, we have both the beginning of autumn as well as the waning cycle. And in the southern hemisphere, you've got the spring coming in, but again, kind of coming into it slowly with the waning phase. And so just take the next couple moments to let yourself get set up wherever you want to. And then we're going to have some quiet, which I know challenging for me, but <laughs> I can do it. It is important to have quiet though the next few weeks, especially if you have a household with partners and children and fur babies and plants or whoever takes up the time and energy and just have some quiet time. You know, like um, I do a lot, I do walks and sometimes I'll like call people or I'll be listening to music, but this is a good time to just be in silence. Or um, if you have a meditation practice, maybe make it a little bit longer. And again, let there be some time where you're just sitting. And, you know, noticing the breath at the nostrils, sensing the body, that's okay, but just letting ourselves have some time to get clear, because how can we know that we're moving from intention, right, those harmonious intentions, if we're not allowing space, and we need that space. So let me give you a little bit of space for a couple moments. You can focus at the breath, at the nostrils. You can do any of the breathing we were doing or just see if you can be here. Letting everything else go. Resting into the wisdom of the waning moon.
Be aware of the breath at the nostrils. And just sensing the temperature of the room, any sounds, swallow and observe any taste in the mouth. Let the breath deepen and notice any scent. And keep the eyes closed, keep that sense quiet. And we continue to observe. Again, feeling the right hemisphere of the brain and the left and both hemispheres together. Plug into the master glands, the pearl of the pineal gland, the twin cherries of the pituitary. Sliding down through the throat to the heart, always offering love and sensing the heart as you feel the right lung and the left lung, both lungs. Sliding back to the bottom ribs and the kidneys, little fists or ears, the right left, and both kidneys. And then feel your right hand. See if you can sense the quality of heat in your right hand. And then feel your left hand and sense a quality of cool. And see if you can hold both hands in your awareness and feeling cool and warm, letting yourself balance the temperatures and the sides. Take another big breath in and side out. And start to wiggle your fingers. Bend your knees. If you're laying over the blocks, please very gently roll into fetal pose and curl in or start to take any movements that feel good. And when you're ready, you can come up. <clears throat> Sitting tall. Place a hand over your heart, a hand over your belly, and just set the intention to move through this week with bringing harmony and healing into your personal relationship with yourself, your practice, with those you are in partnership. Don't be afraid to take time to step out and breathe or pause. And as emotions rise with the cardinal waters midweek or tempers start to flare with the fires at the end of the week and weekend, again, we have the wisdom of the air guiding us. Honor yourself for practicing. We'll seal our time with three ohms. The first ohm is for you. Second ohm as an offering out. Third ohm for Mama Earth and Grandmother Moon. And you can also just listen. Inhale. Oh. Oh. Bring your hands up, rub your palms, stretch left hand, left palm up, right hand, right palm down, connect our virtual moon circle, big breath, lift up, exhale, hands to the earth, we bow and all blessings. Thank you for practicing, have a beautiful waning week, and I hope to see you soon.